his computer audio and admit Ms. Gassett. Absolutely. Okay, so Friday, we finished section A, which is great. You and third block finished section A. Second block, could y'all hear me fussing second block Friday? Yeah. No. Really? Impressive. I managed to get on somebody and y'all didn't hear me. Huh. Well, I had to write up a major referral on somebody for being on the wrong spot on their computer right after I told them not to. You know that whole thing that I tell you guys don't be on a website to read books because the books I want you to read are in my classroom. Because I provide lots of books for you guys to read in my classroom. Yeah, he did this for the third time. So he got his third major referral on me for doing this. So we didn't get to finish the section. Remember how we finished section A Friday in here? We finished section A in third block too. We didn't finish it in second block. So my group does not have recess today in second block because we're going to finish that section in second block today. What, you're already on the lesson? Is that what you're showing me, Logan? Fabulous. All right. So we're in part B. It's Kiyuna needs one of these. Part A. Yep, part B. Here's where we are. All of my friends are going to need scissors and glue and colored pencils today. So, if you need scissors, raise Paul. I don't know. I don't need a verbal response. I just need a hand in the air. Like here. Y'all are getting energized version for me, Dr. Pepperon's version, because I'm very little. Food poisoning will be that to you. Okay, so when I made my copies, they're front back, and the part that you needed to cut was on the back of the part that you're coloring. That makes no sense, though. On the next page, maybe. Yeah, I get it. It wouldn't work if you're coloring and cutting on the same page, would it? It wouldn't help very much, right? It's kind of hard to learn a lesson if you're cutting out the very page you need to be reading, right? So, yeah. made a second copy. Yeah. 
beads. I don't know that they'll fit in those boxes, but they fit better than not. Uh, so the one is so we'll but if you did that, then you'd be setting up your test prep with your box tape, which would be a problem because we take a test prep today too. <laughs> Oh, wow. Hers is perfectly done. What? Hers is on a separate page. It's not from that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You're just on a separate page, too? Mm -hmm. huh. yeah, the test prep on it. Is the test prep on the back? We're not cutting out the little things that look like paper dolls. That's not the part we're cutting out, guys, okay? Yeah. Um, by the way, I haven't even introduced myself to my new friend, Fiona. Am I saying it right, first of all? Fiona. Fiona. Is that right? Second time? I tell everybody to remember my name. I used to drive a van and I'm a certified scuba diver. Van diver. So we're in the south, so we slur it together. Van diver. Okay. okay. <laughs> nope. Nope. Do you guys remember the story I told you earlier this year that I only had one student over all the years that said my name in a way that I would not accept because it you call me van underwear driver my first year and I was like and that'll be the only one that I don't accept that student I've never forgotten him I taught him my first year nine years ago his mom actually died about a month ago and it wasn't that I was Facebook friends with her but she was Facebook friends with somebody in the office and I saw that person in the office saying I'm so sorry such and such and I was like, oh my gosh, that's that student who made the comment years ago as a joke when he's a fourth grader. He called me that and I was like, and that'll be the only one I don't accept. Okay, so I've never forgotten him for that one. But Are you calling me? not repeating Logan, because I know you heard me very clearly, sir. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. These are supposed to be fog proof masks. Yeah, I'm up for that. So that's when you don't forget, but when his mom died unexpectedly, she just had a heart attack and died and she's my age. So yeah, she makes you think because I do have some known heart issues. So. Okay, so let's go to Canvas and get to the article, okay? So we're not on Townshend anymore. We don't want worksheet, not worksheet number one, not worksheet number two. <laughs> yeah, no. It is Loyalist and Patriots text.
As a reminder, I will not be here tomorrow. Miss um, Thomas will be here tomorrow. I'm actually leaving out of town around two o'clock in the morning to head to New Orleans for Colby. Okay. No, Miss Thomas. She's the one that had the boot, the walking boot and the blonde hair. Okay. And you guys will be doing tomorrow the Boston Massacre. So it's something you are vaguely familiar with. Um, by Friday, we will finish part B of unit three and Monday we will be returning to um, science. We'll be returning back to science Monday. I know you are so sad about going to science, aren't you? No. Yes, I am. I don't like to do that. I know. Do you have any what? Projects. Uh, starting Monday. Yeah. Good projects. Starting Monday. We will quickly be approaching the um, unit test, though. You're kidding. No, not. Unit test. Yes. All right. Source one loyalist. Good morning, by the way, Megan. Good morning. Can you see Loyalist on screen share or do I forget to share it? You forgot to. Okay, it is not showing up on my screen. Okay, here it is. Sometimes it acts weird. Okay, there it is. Do you see it now? Yes, ma'am. Logan, my number four child. Start us off reading, Mr. Andrews. Majority. Livelihood, in other words, how they make money. Our livelihood is dependent on trade and good relations with Britain. Does Miss Ramita's load her math in under modules also, guys? No. Is that how ELA loads theirs in? in no. Modules? No, no, I does assignments. Her assignments, but are they loaded in under modules? No. So I'm the only one who uses modules now? Yeah. Because that's how we all three started was under modules. That's, that's why I do modules, because that's how we all three started. Um, they don't go to the home screen. She uses the home screen. Yeah. Okay. I was trying to be consistent because we all agreed at the beginning we would use modules and I didn't switch. <laughs> okay. Uh, second paragraph, please, Allie. Okay. Okay, so that was their argument against others who said, 
why should we pay taxes if we're not going to be represented in Parliament? Their argument was we're too far away from England to be represented in Parliament. So that was their argument. Taxation without representation. What was it? No taxation without representation. Okay. So that was their argument for that. Okay. All right, source two is just below it. Isn't it nice when it's all on one page rather than having to clip through yeah, text? Right. Source two, patriots. Patriots were the colonists who rebelled against the control of the British monarchy. Many patriots believed that all people had unalienable, in other words, uh, things that you're born with, individual rights, and that these rights could not be taken away by a government or king. In 1765, the British government imposed a Stamp Act on the colonies, and we learned about that last week in here. The Act required that most printed material in the colonies be printed on a specially stamped paper produced in Britain. The colonists had to pay a tax for these stamped documents. This tax angered the patriots who believed that taxation takes away property from citizens. The patriots also thought they did not have a voice in the British Parliament, and because they did not have representation, they believed they should not be subject to be taxed. No, no debate. Okay, so what we are going to do is cut these little squares out and we're going to glue them in the appropriate box. Okay. These little squares. So I'm going to stop share on this and share on image mate. Yas, do your best job of cutting. So when I passed out the packets, Megan, I didn't realize that I needed to have a second copy of this page. I put this on Canvas last night. So this page is actually attached in Canvas. And if you have any way of printing this, you're gonna to need to print this so that you can cut this out and glue this onto this page that says Loyalist and Patriots, okay? Could I possibly write them down? Absolutely. They're the, they're more than likely on the back of your page right here. Okay. So they're on the back of what looks like paper dolls. You guys know when you're done with your trash, get up and throw it away. Then you got to figure that out. And considering you've been learning this in Nathaniel's class, you should know. You're okay. I know where Jackson is.
your test prep that we have in a few minutes is over this very subject. You're going to have multiple statements and you're going to have to identify them as being a loyalist statement or a patriot statement. And that's going to be the entirety of your test prep. And then you're going to color the uniforms, Patriots or blue. Correct. Thus, they're nicknamed the Redcoats. And their blue was not a sky blue, it was a dark blue. What's that? Lobster back. That, yes. What colors for the loyalists? Loyalists were red. Patriots were royal blue, like pizza blue. Yeah, they weren't Smurfs. Okay. They were not Smurfs. No Smurfs. They did not have blue skin. You all right there, Allie? You guys know the drill. If you need to borrow colored pencils, you know where they are, but put them down beside the cup so I can spray them with Lysol afterwards. And it's not light blue, it's royal blue, ethyl blue. Okay, this is their vest under, and their vest was not blue. I'm gonna go get a blue. Okay. Over there. Guys, can you get the color back away that way the next person can get one, okay? As I said, when you're done getting what you need, then after you've used it, put it on the counter, find a spray of Lysol. There was two when you took it off the floor. Yes, Melanie. I can't hear you. Yeah, absolutely. We won't bleed the roof, we're fine.
Remember, we're using that little short blue pencil. Okay, at least cover your mouth and you cough. Okay, I know you're wearing a mask, but things do expel through the mask. Have a seat. I'll wait the next person to grab one. Remember, guys, she borrowed to put them back because I do have two more classes of students, all right? And I know my Elmo is being weird, so that looks like a bright sky blue that's not. It's royal blue. So the statement um, American colonies would be weak without Britain. Is that a loyalist? Would that be a loyalist statement or a patriotic statement? Loyalist. Um, taxation takes away property from citizens. Is that a loyalist comment or a patriotic comment? Patriotic. Patriotic, good. If it were not for Great Britain sending assistance during the French and Indian War, the colonists would never have won and survived. Yet when you ask them to pay back the war debt, they throw a fit. How ungrateful. Is that a patriotic or a loyalist statement? A loyalist, good job. Here's the thing, with that, that's a statement from your test prep. You're going to have to pick out from a whole paragraph evidence from that paragraph backing up your answer. Okay. The colonists in the world. Or... Okay, but do you hear me about picking out evidence? And then your next question is going to be how that evidence supports your answer. Okay. Guys, as many paragraphs as you've had to write for me, that should be easy for you to do. You guys, you've already had a unit test, so this is a new unit, isn't it? This is unit three. You just took a unit two test. We're in unit three now. And Friday, we in part B, unit three. Good morning, Kayla. You have a new person sitting beside you. You have a new friend sitting beside you. We are on this page. And you have an additional page. Come on, Miss Hughes. There you go. Do you need scissors or a glue stick? Was it late bus?
windows in dirt. Your face is dirty. Oh, your hair. Head is. Okay, has everybody finished with this part? Okay. You're done with the blue stick. You borrowed it from the up. All right, borrowed scissors. Okay, guys, so the next thing you're going to do, your test prep, you're going to carefully tear these two pages out of your booklet. If it's front back, great. Some of you have it on front back, some of you don't. Some of you have them on two different pages, but you need to tear this out of your booklet. Yeah, you got your test. Yeah, it's supposed to fill in for five minutes. Don't sit on it forever. All right, so everybody rip out your test stuff. I sure hope one of my sons at home because someone keeps setting off my cameras. It'd be someone at my home and not burglar at my home. All right, so on the front of your test prep, right? First name, last name. Yes, Kaylee. Someone's blue stick just bounced off the floor. Okay. I'll give you another tip. Boston Massacre tomorrow. Okay. If your Boston Massacre is on the back of one of your test prep, just remember that and remind me so I can give you another Boston Massacre for tomorrow. Okay. That glue stick is just determined to stay on the floor in the Ricardo. Those things like to bounce. You need a pencil or a racer. I'll, I'll give you a sharp one. The of it. Yeah, you're going to need both papers. Okay, well, I'll give you So, if your Boston Massacre is on the back of your test prep, let me know where it falls. It says, it's on the back of both pages of your test prep. If you have Boston 
massacre on the back end. Megan, on the back of your page, test prep. On the back, is it test prep or is it Boston Massacre? Uh, test prep. Awesome. Okay. I have quite a few kids in my second and third block who have test row loud. So normally, I do whole class test row loud for second and third block. And I don't in first block. And I see a difference in y'all's test scores. So, to be fair, I'm going to read this paragraph, each one of these paragraphs out to you guys. All right. Has everybody got their first and last name written at the top on test prep? This is what you're turning into me today for your score for today. All right. For directions, it says analyze the sources and answer the following questions. Use the passage to answer the following questions. You feel that you've done a lot to assist the colonies to be successful. Your empire has come to the rescue of the colonists time and time again when they've needed protection. If it were not for Great Britain sending assistance during the French and Indian War, the colonists would never have won and survived. Yet, when you ask them to pay back the war debt, they throw a fit. How ungrateful. So answer number one, by bubbling in or circling your best answer. Number two says, what evidence supports your answer? Number three says, explain how the evidence in question two supports your answer in question one. I'm gonna give you guys seven minutes to answer one two and three and then i will read the next paragraph okay yeah. 
Yes, Maya. Where is it? So what did you do while we were doing the Loyalists and Patriots activity? What were you doing? <laughs> okay. Um, let me make a quick copy of this. Okay. So let me know as soon as possible. That way you can have a different time working on this. I'll print it out for you. That way you can get it done. There's no amount of time left on that. Make sure your number three adequately tells me how that evidence supports the answer. Okay. Not just that it supports it, but how you guys know how picky I am. Skyim is the only person that does not know how picky I am. Okay. I might be funny, but I'm also hard. Clearly, someone's at my house walking around. And they tend to like to walk up to those two cameras. I could, but. Either my husband's working on a woodworker in a school or my coach is out there. Yeah. 
else is coming in. Okay, who needs more time to answer one, two, and three? Okay, two more minutes. And I apologize early for what's going to sound like uh, aliens. I got to see what that is while I'm cool. Oh, my goat is in my swimming pool. Uh, uh, I apologize. I need to make a phone call. That's going to be a horrible thing to find. A dead goat. Oh, no, the pool's already messed up, but the goat is in the pool. Hey, okay, who's at home? Uh, Magic is in the pool. He's in the pool. Get home because I don't want him to be, you know, on. Uh, he's right on the edge. He's freaking out. And Isabel is by the back door. Magic in the pool. And he's trying to get out because it's right at the edge of the water. Ah. <laughs> Nobody's at home. The boat's just got out. You never expected that, did you? Uh, what is that? The cameras. Oh, you need to calm down. <laughs> Good thing I checked because nobody was there. My husband's like, What are you talking about? They're in the pool. Yeah, in the pool. Yeah, six feet of it. Yeah. 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 Um, magic is three and a half feet tall. Oh, so she he would drown. No, he's right by the water. Like right by. What? No, they don't. All right, let's keep going. Hopefully, it's home fast. All right. Has everybody finished number three? If not, you can go back and finish, okay? Next set. Sorry I disturbed you guys. That just was not what I was expecting to find on my camera. The Stamp Act imposed on the colonies by the Parliament of Great Britain is an ill-judged measure. Parliament has no right 
to put its hands into our pockets without our consent. Written by George Washington in 1765. Okay, so number four, answer. Okay, then turn to the back, unless it's on a separate page of yours, the other page of test prep. Explain your answer for question five. Why did you say that George Washington was either the governor of Virginia, the president of the United States, a loyalist or a patriot? Okay. Let me give you a hint. In 1765, we didn't have a president. So there's your hint. Got it? The country did not yet have a president. It, correct. Very nice. All right. And without a president, would there be a governor? Okie dokie. I'm giving you two minutes to do number five. Right there. Let me see. Okay, my friends, quiet, please. Check out my four hooked little friends. Explain why he's a loyalist or a patriot, okay? No. No. No, didn't expect that. Are you alive? I'm glad it's my taller goat, not my little goat. We've had animals drown in the pool before, and it's not a fun thing to pull out. No, um, a neighbor's big dog fell in the pool overnight. And my husband had to fish it out. And then one of our puppies fell in the pool overnight before. This happened years ago. Because he's moving, he's in the pool moving. He can't get out. Okay, your time is up. You can get another minute. Do you have a question, Joanna? Okay, it's wanting you to explain why you thought George Washington would be a loyalist or a patriot. Okay. I don't know if I mentioned this to this class or to my homeroom, but Miss Daniels is supposed to be back tomorrow. Yours truly will be gone tomorrow, but Miss Daniels will be back tomorrow. Mr. Graham will be gone tomorrow. You'll have Miss Thomas for me. Thank you, Thomas. Wow. Um, Her first day out of Miss Holcomb's room, she'll be up here. I got her for her first day that she's available.
All right, let's stop the talking, please. Okay, next one for number six. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thomas Jefferson said those words, and you've probably heard those before because they are very much um, properly quoted words. Based on the quote by Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson could be considered as which of the following? A patriot, the king, a loyalist, or the president of the United States. Um, he did later become the president, but um, yes, but that's not when he was saying those statements. Okay. So patriot, the king, the loyalist. All right, sit down, Michaela. Sit down, Michaela. Right now, answer number six. No. What's funnier is Colby is at bird right now and he's also getting these notifications. And he's probably watching this going, what the heck? <sighs> <laughs> they can't call anybody and say, hey, go rescue the goat. So he's at home. He's, at, um, he's a bird. He's at school. He's getting these notifications too. Colby and I are the two that have some notifications on our phone. No, he has this set on quiet. But he's getting these notifications too. I'm watching the goat in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably like uh this is gonna be gross when dad goes home he doesn't hurry him go home all right number seven the loyalists and patriots differed on how the british empire was to be a part of the american colonies using your knowledge of social studies you can't drag them and we're not going to cut up this paper you can't put one and two because oh yeah you can do one two three four perfect That's what I mean. yes so you're going to write you see how they're numbered one two three and four you're going to write one two three and four in the appropriate box so does the number one statement fit a loyalist statement or does it fit a patriot statement number two number three number four Put them in the appropriate box. Okay. Number two. There's not number two, four. Okay. It helps my friends that you have had all this in ELA.
So this is a 10 point little quiz, but there wasn't any way to study for it because it was on today's content and content that you've studied that you've done in ELA. There wasn't a study in for it. freaking out because now he's setting it off a lot. Remember, that's my dog that's blind and deaf. It's barking. One's barking. Yep. One's barking. yep. My special household. I have no clue. Yeah, and when we try to go out there and be nice to him, the dog, like, tries to bite us because it's acting like a little nut lately. Your dog acts like my dog. <laughs> Ace used to be a sweetheart, but lately, that's like a little jerk. He's five years old and acts awesome. Um, they said it's not a study. a little older. Um, it's not a steady seven years. You know, we always thought it was seven years for every dog, for every human year, dog year. It's the first year they, it's like they age 20 years to the human time. And then they slow down. It's not a steady progression. He's one year old. He's one. So they say he's like a young adult. All right. Has everybody finished their test prep? Is there anybody still working on it? Okay. Keep working. Still older than me. What? Alright, can you just say for the test Yeah, you can have a lot of them. Magic's like a teddy bear. He's so sweet. I used to have a dog that was here, right? And it looked like a dog. 
This is the first male goat we've ever had. One of my dogs' name is furry and has like that, and it's like pure white, not a wolf. No, it's like snow. Thank you. 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 He's walking right alongside with the water. Yet he's walking right beside the water. Now I can't see him. He walked out of the camera shot. Uh, the other goat is over on the other end on the deep end, but it's not in the water. What happened to your dog? Uh, he was born blind and deaf. They're like, is he on there? No, he's in the fence. We have multiple yards. How many the goats uh, Probably, yes, yeah, 19,000 gallons. Um, probably Ian didn't shut the gate all the way or he didn't lock it. And Ace knows how to um, put his foot up. I mean, not Ace. Magic knows how to put his foot up and open up and watch. All right. Has everybody finished with their test prep? Yeah. Okay. So Travis had asked me to get a book or two about Abraham Lincoln. He said he really liked stuff on Abraham Lincoln. Oh, yeah. So I did. But when I did, I also got this book. And I thought this would be a good way for us to do this a little bit of our time. Okay. Keep on clothes, homes, and daily life in colonial America. It is an AR book. I haven't marked it yet. I don't know the AR. I sure hope I'm not trying to tread water right now. I'll have to look up during um, enrichment time to see what the AR number is so we can really start it. Okay. All right. Everybody's finished their test prep, right? Yeah. I have Abraham Lincoln okay. right here. Oh All right. Many cultures, one land. The people of colonial America were a strange mix. Colonists came from many countries, including England, the Netherlands, Germany, Sweden, and France. Their customs varied as much as their languages. Some colonists came seeking adventure. Others, like those at Jamestown, Virginia, hoped to get rich through trade. The pilgrims who settled in Plymouth, Massachusetts, wanted religious freedom. In America, colonists also met American Indians. Dozens of tribes lived on America's east coast. Each tribe was unique. The Iroquois were as different from the Algonquins as the English were from the Swedes. In 1619, the first Africans arrived in America. These people didn't come by choice. Slave traders forced them into slavery. Their numbers increased slowly. By 1675, about 5,000 Africans lived in the colonies. Who else do we know that Europeans enslaved early on? Um, Native. Native Americans. Right in Jamestown, they had the Native Americans that they enslaved, right? The Wampanoags, they enslaved them right off the bat. Throughout the colonial period, which lasted from 1607 to 1776. European colonists, American Indians, and African slaves learned from each other. They exchanged ideas to create homes, clothing, and customs. The sharing of ideas resulted in a culture that became uniquely American. Um, European slave traders also brought slaves from the Caribbean islands. So 
enslaved people came from Africa, and they came from the Caribbean, as well as from America. Native Americans. Ms. Vandenberg. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Ms. Uh She is currently in Ms. Daniels' classroom. Okay, thank you. Of the people who had no um, I don't know if the Soto was a slave trader, but I do know that Christopher Columbus was. Getting dressed. You could tell a lot about colonists from the clothes they wore. Farmers and laborers wore loose clothing made of cheap fabric so they could work comfortably. So did servants and housewives. Wealthy people wore fine fabrics designed to impress others. Their clothes were too fancy and too tight for work. Clothing styles varied from colony to colony. So would these be work clothes? Yeah. No. no. Those are fancy clothes. You know how tight that is on those ladies' waist? And those guys? Those don't look like work clothes. I don't want to see. I don't want to see. They don't look fancy. Just like we teachers this year. What's the one thing that all of us are wearing every day? Jeans. Jeans. Why are we wearing jeans? What are we teachers having to do every day this year? Wear jeans. What? I said trunk. You want me to throw a book at you? I have fairly today. You should know that by now. What do we have to do? Clean. They don't want us messing up our nice clothes. So we wear jeans and we have to wear decent enough looking tops. I generally wear nice tops to go to jeans, right? Um, so you have different clothes that you would wear depending on what your job is expected to be. Does that make sense? Right. So these are jeans, not the most expensive jeans because I know we work in them. I don't use a spray that the school gives me because I don't know what's in it. I use Clorox. I buy it myself. The school's not going to buy my Clorox wipes. I'm going to buy my Lysol wipes, but I'm going to keep it everybody else. Right? Sure. So that's why we wear jeans. Why do we have to? And why we wear clothes that we can throw in the washer. Okay? These people didn't do a lot of hard work. And they certainly wouldn't do it in their fancy clothes. They lazy. No, but they wouldn't be doing the hard work. They would have people hired who would be wearing um, work clothes. Okay. Um, clothing styles vary from colony to colony. In the hot south, people wore light work, lightweight cloth or linen clothes. In chilly New England and the cooler middle colonies, people wore warm wool. A colonist outfit began with underwear, but underwear wasn't what you might expect. All colonial men wore long sleeved white undershirts to reach their knees. Yes, yeah, glad I didn't do that. Women and children wore shifts, that's like a straight dress, instead of shirts. A shift was a long sleeve dress that fell below the knees. No one bothered with boxers or briefs. <laughs> Breezy. <laughs> Underpants weren't common in America until the 1830s. I really Women and children wore stays over their shifts. A stay was made of stiff pieces of whalebone. <laughs> reeds. Y'all know what a reed is? Okay. So if you go north a little bit on Mansfield Road, you know where Barron Road curves down off that hill where the ditch fills with water and you have those tall cattails. Yes. Uh, a reed is another name for a cat cell. So these stays can be made of whalebone or essentially cattails, the stiff part, metal or wood. 
sounds cozy to have right up next to your body. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, I think so. Uh, now. Women and children. <laughs> sounds cozy. I can tell you this. I have a long piece of titanium in my neck, and I turned my head some. <laughs> They were sewn into a tight-fitting garment that went from waist to chest. That was the stay. It's like a corset. Stays for women and children. Stay on strut. We also made it hard to bend over or play. Many boys wore stays until they were six. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Until they were six. Girls wore them all their lives. They even wore them when they were sleeping. <laughs> even in the shower. simple dresses. That's right. Even boys wear dresses. Even boys Out of about age six, boys were Breached. Breach is another word for pants. This custom meant they could finally ditch the dresses for knee leaf pants called breeches. So at six, little boys can ditch the dress. <laughs> Colonial shoemakers made children's shoes at least two sizes too big. Very smart. Children wrapped their feet in thick, itchy wool. Yeah. So they grew into the shoes. I don't know about that thick itchy wool. So here is a piece of a uh, primary source. Anna Green Winslow, when she was age 12, wrote this in 1772. I was dressed in my yellow coat, my black bib and apron, my high heeled shoes. Poor little child. I know. A cap with blue ribbons on it and a very pretty locket in the shape of a heart. I wore my new cloak and bonnet, gloves, and so on. I love my jeans. Yeah, I love my jeans. I guess I love my jeans. Okay, If you have one of these, take it with you. Oh. 
All right, Megan, I will see you t uh, Thursday morning, okay? There's not going to be a uh, Zoom tomorrow because I will be in New Orleans. I'll leave out at 2 o'clock in the morning, okay, Megan? I guess you already left.